And welcome back to another episode of Psychic Evolution. I'm Jamie Clark. And I'm Maggie Clark, and this is the podcast where you discover the psychic potential within to empower yourself and manifest your psychic and mediumship gifts. Now today, we want to clarify a few things about the difference between a gatekeeper and a master guide. We've been getting some questions about connecting with spirit guides. As always, this is something we love to develop in our psychic evolution. So this podcast episode is dedicated to really working with our spirit team and also understanding, do we need a gatekeeper? What is it for? What's the function of a gatekeeper? And how is it different than all the other guides that we have? So when I was a a young apprentice, right, I was studying with my mentor who was a trans channel. So he needed a gatekeeper. And his gatekeeper was a soul essence that dedicated his energy, obviously his space, his safety, all of the things that he wanted to add to protecting who comes in and who doesn't come through. Because when you're a channeler, he was a trans channel and he, he had really dedicated and committed himself to channeling lots of different entities from the other side for specific purposes, for specific reasons. And he met his gatekeeper when he was, I think, in his early 20s. He was sitting at a party with a bunch of people, and all of a sudden, everyone froze. It's like time stood still. And I know we've all seen this on the movies, but this actually happened to him, which was so fascinating. And John appeared and said, hey, I'm your gatekeeper, and this is my introduction. So it was almost like the whole world stood still. Everyone was frozen, and there he was talking to John. And John was explaining to him, hey, this is you know, part of what you're going to be doing in your life. Will you dedicate yourself to channeling? I will be your gatekeeper to only allow certain entities in. So it's not just a free for all. Anyone can come through. And he took him through a life review at that time and showed him his past and where he had been and potentially what he could accomplish while he was here on this planet. So in that moment, you know, time stood still. There really was no time. He had no idea how much time passed. He thought it was at least a couple hours he spent with this guy. But really, when he when John left, everything came right back on, picked back right where it left off, and then they kept going. It was like his own personal time warp experience. And so he said, "Yes, of course, you know, yes, I will I will do this." Of course, He kind of put that on the back burner and it slapped him upside the head years later and he ended up doing exactly what he said he was going to do. Getting there was, you know, a process at that point because he was still growing. He was young and he was living life and doing his thing. So having a gatekeeper for Marion was basically a safety mechanism. So John's function as a gatekeeper was literally to allow certain people through and certain people not through. Of course, we always have our safety rules and regs. Only those alight are welcome in my space. All others be gone. Whatever rules and regs you set up, right? So the gatekeeper is there to make sure that those rules and regulations are enforced. And also as a channeler, before you open yourself up to spirit or to channeling whoever, whatever, it's really good to make sure that you have a gatekeeper who actually allows these things to enter so that you're more comfortable actually channeling and then you're not attracting any oddball energies. So that is really what a gatekeeper is for. Now, the difference between a gatekeeper and a master guide is, well, first off, one, they can be one of the same. Your master guide can also be your gatekeeper if you decide you want to channel or work with that type of frequency, that type of energy. Now, A master guide can be the one that orchestrates everything like Chi does for Jamie. So he orchestrates Jamie's whole spirit team. So a gatekeeper doesn't necessarily orchestrate your whole spirit team, but is part of your spirit team. So there is a slight difference there, but they can be one of the same. This can also be your higher self. This also could be your soul print. So when we're working with our spirit team, some of our spirit team have very specific functions like, hey, I'm going to help you find lost objects. Hey, I'll be your parking angel. Hey, I will be whatever, right? Whatever whatever your spirit team does. Now, your gatekeeper is literally there to allow people in and out of your energetic field. And the rules around that is set up between you and your gatekeeper. What would you like to see? 
What kind of people would you like to channel or would you like to experience? Or if I have someone coming from the other side, do you want me to bring that to you through a gatekeeper or would it go through your master guide? A lot of that is determined by you and your own rules and regulations. And Meg brings up an interesting point, which is Chi, my master guide, is also my gatekeeper. But not only that, I myself am the gatekeeper. That's why for me, the intent, my rules and regs is only people of the positive, loving, happy energies will come through anything else I do not exist to. I wanted to make sure that I'm safe and doing this for most of my life. I know that I am safe in that connection. And so we have our team and sometimes our master guide or whoever the gatekeeper is that can help us. But I also bring up a dynamic that I believe most people may not even think about And that is kind of like we have guides in this capacity. What about our guides who have their guides who help guide them along their life experience and journey? Because we might have more people on our team than we realize. Not everyone has the same amount of guides, but that please question everything. Because for me and what she has let me know is... For him to be able to be orchestrating, he also let me know that there are other guides that are connected to the team. They have their own specific talents as well. And kind of like our guides and our master guide, Chi's very effective at putting the right guide in the right place at the right time. Meaning I always equate it like if we have an air conditioning problem, we're not going to call somebody who works on pools. We're going to call somebody who more than likely works on air conditioners and has knowledge about that of one way or another. And in this case, it becomes a lot more effective that all we have to do is allow the team to work their magic. That kind of ties into a parking angel because a lot of people, which is perfect, that's great. And in that connection, they'll be like, and my parking angels seem to get me parking spots right up front. I'm like, right. You realize what you're saying, right? (laughs) For me, it's they are accepting the end result of a good parking space, but then they have put the bridge of connection and facilitation with that parking angel. And so now they give that particular parking angel the power to find parking spaces. So now we start to see how we perceive our guides. They will tend to function within and sometimes beyond those perceptions. And when they can give us insight, understanding about some of the rules and regs that they deal with as well, it's not just us. It's the co-creative process of connection. But in addition, the average person also may not think about that Dr. Masuro Emoto, who thoughts affect the molecular structure of water. And I always say, if you're doing mediumship, psychic, or channeling in any way, you are picking up on other people, other beings' thought patterns. It will literally affect your molecular structure of your body. What if by doing channeling or mediumship or psychic or whatever the case is, you have created a stronger, clearer neural soul way. The ability to tap in specifically to go, I just want psychic information, or I want mediumship and psychic information, or I want... So again, there's a variety of ways that we can ask our team to help us to be more efficient, to have less fear and more empowerment to open up to these natural abilities. As Meg and I say, these abilities are so natural, they're supernatural. That's the point. Everyone has the ability. And whether you're aware of your guides or not does not matter. Notice how most of the time our guides aren't going, hello, McFly, you better you better acknowledge me. It's like, nah, if, if he or she is even ready, whenever they are, we'll step right in so that they recognize we're on their team. They don't force us to make the connection. They allow us to make the connection. And for Chi, my master guide, he's very good at orchestrating my other guides and the ability to keep me safe and harmonized and beautifully guided down my life's path. Because it's not always easy to have the bigger picture. When for me, I just allow Chi, who seems to have an awareness of the bigger picture in this case, that can give me an understanding of information that can alleviate, sometimes we'll have fears about what we don't understand. And then we tend to go down those rabbit holes. That's why, as Mag is sharing, our master guides or the gatekeepers or whomever we want to work with 
always want to keep us as comfortable and safe as possible. That way there's not a fear to go, I hope I'm safe. It's like, for me, I know I'm safe. I don't question it. It is a knowingness, not a belief, a knowingness. Since I've done this 50-something years, I have not had all oddball energies come through in sessions. They they don't. They just, they don't. And so it's a really great dynamic because I have complete faith and trust in Chi and my spiritual team. It's a great teamwork. It is all of our beingness, all of our guides that also have other guides that they're connected to. What if it's the expansion of unification, meaning we're all one. And in this, our guides are just different facets of who we are. And in that connection, they have an idea of what would be productive or, as we perceive it, destructive for us to experience in this particular lifetime. So our guides are usually beneficial and they're always for us, not against us, or they wouldn't be our guides, basically. But also, for me, Chi, my master guide, is able to bring guides onto the team, so to speak, in different aspects, in different ways. It's not like everyone at one time was my whole team. It's been added that new guides come in, other guides might go in other directions. It is not limited. What if just even being a guide is like us here in this physical to go, okay, what does it take to keep living and and to keep expressing and experiencing? Well, to keep going, that's the point. But also, we don't stay in the same location all the time. More than likely, we might travel around to other locations, other areas, meet other people, and it's just an expansion. But it's also that I have the trust and faith in Chi, my master guide, or as he is, the gatekeeper as well, that I don't have to worry because I know if I'm doing my readings that I'm always safe. So that's a huge, for me, a huge dynamic of being safe and relaxed because the more safe and relaxed you are, the more receptive you can become. Now, after my mentor, Marion, passed, I started working on more of my channeling. I was like, okay, I think I want to do this. It was years after, though, because I needed to grieve and heal and figure life out again and explore some options. So when I was ready to actively work with channeling, I asked Marion to be my gatekeeper, and he said yes. And so this was a conversation that he and I had together. And I was in my spiritual room. I took myself into my own spiritual room, into my meditation, and I had what I call a powwow. This was just asking all of my guides to sit with me in my spiritual room and, you know, just really figure out, okay, how do I want to go forward being comfortable? How do I want to receive information? And then part of my rules and regs with Marion is like he would bring people to me if I didn't recognize the soul print. If he brought them to me, they were of the light and high enough energy and in, in a space of love for me to be able to channel. But if he did not bring them through me and I did not recognize the soul print of consciousness, then my my bells and whistles would go off and whatever, you know, like, okay, like, let's beef up that little safety thing. We don't need to channel things that are weird. That just kind of brings up an interesting point for me. And that is, did any of your gatekeepers, guides, choose to be on your team as well, specifically to become your guides as well as his? You know, it's very interesting because when I met my teacher... Marion, and I started working with him, I feel like there was an overlap of our guides. Like some of his guides were then guiding me. My guides might have been working with him. I felt like there was like a merging because we work so closely together for 16 years. I think sometimes those guides can merge. And even being in a relationship with you, Jamie, I get messages from Chi sometimes. I'm like, huh. They come more in the form of questions. I'm like, okay, I'm going to ask Jamie this question, but I feel like it's prodded from Chi. It's an interesting energy when he comes to me. And Chi came to me right away when we started dating, actually, Jamie, like a while ago. I was like, oh, does he look like this and this? And you're like, yeah, you see that? I'm like, yeah, I see that. And so I think a lot of times when you're in close knit contact with friends, family, personal relationships, that there can be an overlap of guides. And the gatekeeper themselves, to answer your question, do I now have access to his guides because they're my gatekeeper? I think if they were to serve me in some way, yeah, why not? Like you said, when you think about the expansion of guides being like, well, your guides have guides and more guides have guides. And if we're all one, then 
we're just talking to ourselves anyway. We just differentiate between this soul print and that soul print. And we have to do that to try to get our bearings around us in a dimensional field, I think. And also to understand that we have free will, we have choices, we have our own experiences, but they are part of the whole. So when we think about our guides doing the same thing, they have their own experiences, yet they're part of the whole. So I think it all comes back to like you said, sometimes you have friends for a certain time and then you move, you do other things, those friends go away. I think the same thing for our guides. And it's very individual. Remember, when you're choosing a gatekeeper, you want to make sure that you're comfortable. Sometimes a gatekeeper will come to you like John came to Mary and said, hey, I want to work with you. Sometimes you can ask, like I asked Marion to be my gatekeeper. Did I have another gatekeeper? Yeah, absolutely. I've always had a gatekeeper. Yet I wanted to work with Marion, so I chose that. So we do have some personal choices to make sometimes with the guides that we work with. And I share the fact that for me, our guides will not make us do anything. And with the psychic medium, a lot of people tend to fear to go, that psychic medium stuff is going to overtake me and it's going to overwhelm me. And and so I share the fact that I know a lot of people that are waking up psychically going, I'm seeing and feeling all this stuff. And a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times when they start to open up and start reading energy, they'll pick up on the negative as we perceive it because to me it's a slow, sloppy vibration. The good stuff, solid. And a lot of times they'll do this. If that's all I'm going to see is the negative, then I don't want to do this. Blomp, blomp, blomp. And then I share the fact to go, you realize what you're saying, right? You control your abilities. Your abilities do not control you. And our guides are not going to overstep our bounds, meaning if we don't want to do that, they're not going to go, you have to. It's, oh, you don't want to do it right now? Okay, I love you. I'm here to guide you in any way. Are you open for it or not? Because I love you. And the ability for us to be open for a connection because, again, they're for us and not against us or they wouldn't be our guides, basically. So the cool thing is, is they are there to help benefit us, not to be a detriment, but an empowerment. We want to do a small little exercise with you today about connecting to your spirit guides so that you can start really talking with them, working with them, receiving information from them. We can do this one of two ways. You can do it if you're already working with your spiritual room. You can do it in your spiritual room. But today we're going to take you into the garden. And in this garden, this is a beautiful place of connection. So just imagine walking into this beautiful garden, feeling that sun on your face, the slight cool breeze with the perfect temperature, just walking into the garden, getting yourself nice and comfortable. And as you just cruise on through, you start awakening your psychic senses, start seeing things, looking at the sky and the clouds. Can you see them in your mind sight? Can you hear the birds chirping and the babbling of the brook? Can you touch the bark of the skin? And do you smell the flowers that are blooming in the fresh cut grass? And what else? Do you want to taste something? Maybe have a little bite of a strawberry, a wild strawberry on your way in to sit down. Mm. So all your senses are being activated here. And as you come into your garden and you find yourself with these beautiful chairs facing each other, have a seat in one of those chairs and just settle in. And here is a chance for you to ask one of your guides or your gatekeeper or your master guide to come and sit with you. Come sit with me and let's have a conversation. If you are ready to choose a gatekeeper or to meet your gatekeeper, let's ask your gatekeeper to sit in front of you and say hello. I would love to work with you. I would love for you to keep me safe as I learn how to channel different energies of spirit, mind, and body through me. You get to choose what you want here. But I want you to take yourself here into this garden and sit with your spirit team. Talk to them. Share information together. 
allow there to be this communication of back and forth, a give and a take. After asking a question, just pause and listen. What do you feel with your metaphysical senses? Do you hear something? Do you smell something? Do you see something? Do you just know what they're telling you and what they're communicating to you? And it's very important that you realize if you're calling your guides, they'll come directly to you. The ability to make those communications and to get the information that in this case, if it's a psychic aspect of potential coming up and then it happens, it becomes a little bit easier for you to trust when your master guide or your gatekeeper or one of your guides shares something. Because those who know me know I always question everything to go, okay, if you're sharing information with me, what's the outcome? I want a reference to go, okay, if it's presented this way, most likely it's going to play out this way. If it's that way, it's playing out that way. And when you can become more comfortable in your own language of communication, whatever that might be, it becomes a lot more fun and less daunting and less scary. And because to me, it doesn't have to be the scary stuff. It can be entertaining, informative, and empowering. It's a great gift that everyone has, but no one's made to use it. They're allowed to. And as you can see, not everyone chooses that gift. It is a gift that a select few choose to work with. Everyone has the ability. It is natural. And in that connection from the inside out, we already have these metaphysical senses, which in turn can hypersensitize us to these physical senses. And when you become multidimensional, you start to realize, oh, it's all one. And I'm just in this physical location, this third dimension as we perceive it. And I've got my team that can be with me anywhere at any time and every time. Like, right, there is no limit. Our only limit is us. And if you're comfortable working with them, you will. If not, they're not going to make you. It's, hey, this is who I am. This is what my talents are. And you're being open for that communication. Hear what they say and feel what they mean. Because more than likely, they're going to be very genuine to get you comfortable. Not just saying stuff that isn't correct or isn't real in this case as we perceive it. But that they're able to give us some comfort some solid knowingness that, okay, I think they've got a pretty good grasp on maybe that dynamic of what's happening. Because, again, when we can open up to our team and they're always for us and never against us, it becomes a little bit more mm, receptive to go, okay, let's see what else they want to share. Let's see what else they have. And then the ability to put parameters around that. For me, as I've shared, Chi, my master guide, is also my gatekeeper. And in that, not only is it the team of him, but it is also myself with my own rules and regs that I have put in place that I am only connected with by the positive loving energies. Anything else, I do not exist in any way. And when you're working with a gatekeeper, you're also building trust, building trust in the safety and the rules and regs that we have in place. And just take yourself into this garden once a day and just say, hey, let's just commune here. Let's share some information. You can ask questions. They might give you information that you don't even ask for. And just be open. And at times it might start off slowly. Like, I think I feel this. I know I feel them. But what are they feeling? What are they saying? I can't hear clearly. Or what are they showing me? I can't see clearly. And if you go here every day, things will start to become more clear. It's just a matter of connecting. It's a matter of trusting. It's a matter of opening up those channels and being comfortable with them. Because we have we're the ones that have to be comfortable hearing, seeing, tasting, smelling, knowing. And then learning how to trust that. And we trust that because we start doing it every day and we're getting messages or receiving messages that are improving the quality of our life, guiding us on our path, helping us feel connected. These are the energies of support. These are the energies of so much love. These are the energies saying, we understand how hard it is here on earth, guys. 
We are here to help you as much as you need it. We've got you. We're here with you. And all of our teams are with us in this beautiful capacity. The more we call them in, the more we're consciously calling in our support. The more we work with them consciously, the more they can consciously connect with us because we'll be familiar with their vibration. And that's a big key is getting familiar with their own vibration, with the the way that they feel, their own soul print. And as soon as we get that, as soon as we know it and we can start feeling it, then the trust just, oh my God, it's like an exponential expansion into our gifts and into how we can work with our guides and get more clarity, more understanding and more guidance. And remember, they can't make us do anything. They can offer, but they're here to really support us as as we are going through this human journey. And we don't have to do it alone because we're not alone. We have a plethora of guides and using our gatekeeper or using our higher self or using our master guide as a primary point of connection will help us make all the connections that we need as we grow into our psychic evolution. And they're great with the communication, but they're also very efficient with how we receive information. Meaning, if we don't hear talking or voices communication, they're not going to talk with us, is the point. Because it'd just be a waste of time. Like, oh, oh, they see things in their mind, so I'm going to start showing them pictures. Or I'm going to make them feel the information. Or whatever the dynamic is, again, they're very sensitized at our way of receiving information. They already know how they give it. But it's also that connection that they want us to understand the best that we can, whatever information is being shared. Because otherwise, they'd just be flapping their gums and be like, well, all I'm doing is hearing voices in this case, and it's a bunch of blah, 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 blah. They want to make sure that that communication, whatever way we can receive the information, is effectively facilitated. So it's that kind of an alignment that they want to make sure the best that they can for us, the best that we can to receive information in some way, hopefully comprehend that. And then if we have questions, they could share more insight about that dynamic. So have fun and check out our other podcasts that we have on Spirit Guides. We have one on Meeting Your Master Guide, which takes you a little bit slower through that garden with a little bit more preparation as you meet your Master Guide. And throw us questions if you have any questions on guides. This is a hot topic and it's always going to be a hot topic because when we feel like we're not doing this alone, that we can rely on the support of the universe and the support that we have with our guides, then you learn how to trust. Then you learn how to settle in and know that no matter what, you're going to be okay. And the decisions you're making are beautiful. And the connection to spirit whether it's the other side, whether it's your guides, whether it's interdimensionals. We have so many avenues that we can explore. So take it on for a turn. Give yourself a good 90 days of commitment to meeting with your guides in your spiritual room or in your garden every day, because I'll start this with you right here, right now, today. Let's do 90 days together and let me know how it goes. Because I guarantee you, if every day you sit there and you connect, just allowing yourself to feel the vibration and be patient with yourself, you might get frustrated at times. You might be like, why I don't feel anything. Just be patient. If you feel one thing a day, one small energy connection, one small vision, one small word, whatever, however you receive, it will really vastly improve your faith that you are not alone. You're not doing this alone. And you have a lot of support from your team and they will guide you every step of the way. They're your biggest cheerleaders. They're your biggest fans and they love you immensely. So keep the connection with your guides because they will guide you beautifully, safely, and a lot more harmonized than what we would probably do if we're trying to deal with all of this stuff on our own. 
Again, that's why we're given some help and assistance from other beings, in this case our other guides, that we have some versatility of communication, that there are many different ways to see a particular circumstance or experience, which gives me more of an expanded awareness to make more productive choices or to understand more information more effectively. It's the ability of communication that our guides are always wanting us to have an open communication with them if we're okay with it, because otherwise, like I said, they're not going to make us. They're going to keep coming in and forcing us to do it because then we'd be fighting it. It's if you're ready and when you're ready, kind of like Marion was, John just came to him out of the at a party, at a party, and everything freezes real time in a real way. But it's that kind of connection that our guides and other beings are pretty good at orchestrating realities because the average person would probably kind of question, go, why did everyone freeze? Why is nobody moving? And how is that possible? I was in this zone for a couple of hours, yet it was only a brief moment and nothing stopped in any way. They didn't think that they stopped and froze. They're just doing their thing. But it's also that kind of co-creation with realities that a lot of times our guides are used to kind of sauntering through those other channels of communication, and they can be the most effective for us to receive the information. So we want to hear your stories. So if you go to our website, psychicevolution.net, in the lower right-hand corner's little microphone, if you would like to record a little story for us about connections that you're making with your gatekeeper, your master guide, whatever it you feel like you want to share, we'll share it on our podcast in Season 9. So have fun with your Psychic Evolution, guys, and keep having fun with your guides. <laughs>